Kirby in the Forgotten World is gorgeous, and so beautiful, I feel like I'll throw up if I hit it too hard. I've always liked Kirby as a lover, like Nathan Drake or Luigi, mainly because of his up B in Smash Bros. The only difference is that, so far, I haven't tried enough of his games to justify my affection for him. But after playing the last one, I guess I just didn't like him enough. The game is not boring. Every time you think the HAL Labs have figured it all out, they pull out a Swiss army knife with unlimited tools. Each of these worlds is unique and unique, but still has a doomsday theme, and that's because they all fall into different apocalyptic categories. Abandoned cityscapes, closed landscapes ice, everything from Mad Max to the sprawling desert. Once you get there, you realize you have to think twice about it first. Kirby's real talent is to mimic the properties of sucking and eating objects with his vacuum mouth, and that's what makes this game so great, is how desperate they were to push the craftsmen. You've got superpowers like grenades, fire extinguishers, and boomerangs, but things get great once you get your hands on a vending machine and start throwing coke cans all over the place. You can be a car, you can be a light bulb, you can be a traffic scammer, you can be an amusement. As for how perfectly linear this game is, there's a surprising amount of extra stuff. Each level presents other challenges, such as defeating a minibus in a limited amount of time, or break the wall and find a hidden area. Much like Mali Austria 64 though, when you complete the level for the first time, you will find out the available challenges. If you explore the lost path and try everything you find, you may accidentally complete all of the end side challenges on the first leg of the adventure and fly away victorious. Win! Each challenge you complete unlocks another boy in the village, giving you more nicknames and shops as the population grows. You end up building an arena with boss battles and vending machines small toys. It is possible to build an entire street. You can pay a lot to buy Kirby figures that don't actually do anything, and even knowing that fact, I still can't afford to collect every single one of them. I know, I'm still spoiled and collecting all the time, game points for realism must be rewarded. There is a blacksmith that can permanently upgrade your power if you find the right blueprint hidden in the levels. He appeared, and I want to go back to my town to quickly upgrade my hammer skill just to spend the next half hour mining the diner. Now I'll be the first one to say that I know nothing about video games. I'm not an abyss player in video games. I was lucky when Cuphead and Undertale's genocide route ended, but if I had the option to play in simple mode, I would always play it. So when I, the guy who still plays Mario Odyssey as Dork's sidekick, says the game is simple, very simple. I have to constantly check the options menu to make sure I'm still playing hard and without using any items from the shop, I can still survive and only die a few times, and if you're looking for a real challenge, you might be a little disappointed. But if you want a bright, colorful, and fun game, try Kirby and the Oblivion. Also, Kirby can get a gun in this game, 1 out of 5.